<clears throat> Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 586. And the topic today is love at first sight. Be warned. <laughs> um, I'm going to blow this myth up just because it's time. And I was sitting with what I was going to talk about, but oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me back up a second and say, hi, my name is Barry Selby and introduce myself formally. I, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what inspired these talks now, now for over a couple of years called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 586. And the topic today is love at first sight. Be warned. And I'm saying it that way intentionally because... There's a certain romantic, um, that's what we're looking for. <sighs> Fantasy, maybe it's a good word for it. It's been running around for a while now and with Valentine's Day just six weeks away, yes, I'm already thinking about Valentine's Day. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while. That's the next big holiday in the calendar, it seems like, for everybody. And for a lot of people, they have a lot of investment in making things happen by Valentine's Day. So. I was just sitting with that and then this topic just popped into my head. So let's talk about it for a second. There is, a, there is this um, often talked about, um, I want to say an urban legend, but it's certainly a fantasy. People run around going, you know, this relationship was amazing. It was love at first sight and it was perfect. You may have heard that before from somebody. I've heard it before from somebody. But I want to say it this way. That somebody is probably one in a million. There are many, many, many relationships that started with love at first sight and ended badly. So I want to break it down for you a bit more to give you some suggestions, some guidance, and some inspiration. Not necessarily in that order. If you watch my broadcast, you know they're never scripted, so that's why I don't plan the way it's going to go. But I want to speak about it this way. Love at first sight is sometimes the feeling that you've finally met the person you've been waiting for all your life. But you're basing this because, again, it is love at first sight on a certain piece of information. And I'm being very, I'm, some, I'm attempting to be somewhat clinical on this one because the true connection and intimacy relationship is usually not by what you see, it's how you feel. And this is the mm, sort of nuance, but also the reminder. When you meet somebody in life, and you look across it, it's like you, your eyes lock across a crowded room and you know it's the one, that sort of um, soap opera, pulp fiction type idea. You're leaving a lot of things out of the conversation. Because when you meet somebody across the room and you look at them and you go, wow, they're an amazing looking person, they're so attractive, but you don't know what they're like any other way except the way they happen to be appearing in front of you in that moment. Some of the things that might not be um, obvious when you meet somebody across that crowded room and your eyes lock is you don't even know if they're sober. <laughs> I'm going to be blunt with this one. Or if they're even, even, even if they're available. But more than that and more critical, because if you're looking for somebody who's available and just, for example, the other person is sober and available, you don't know what they're like in terms of if they're abusive or not if they actually are addicted to some sort of substance type like things. Maybe they are an alcoholic outside of those environments, but you don't know this. So you're basing your whole romantic future on one glance across a room, some distance away at somebody. And if you're not wearing your glasses, maybe you can't see them clearly anyway. I'm ridiculing this for a reason. That love at first sight thing is 99.9% 99 .9 of fallacy. And it, it's not something I recommend at all. In fact, what I speak about in my work, and if you watch my videos, you know this about me, is you've got to get clear about the vision you're looking to attract. Something that you can actually embody and feel internally, and this is the ladies particularly, so that when you meet somebody, you already know when they line up or not. But also, you then go do some um, verification and due diligence. Because you meet somebody on an app, and that's the other thing that's changed since the Love at First Sight theory got put out there, was the dating apps that showed up over the last three, four years, because it hasn't been that long, are largely predicated upon the fact that you swipe and swipe and swipe and click on somebody you think looks cute. And that viewpoint, that focus point, that, um, 
lens that you look through is very narrow and very limited. So when you meet somebody who looks the part that you think you want to be with, don't get too assumptive yet. Don't put your eggs in one basket. In fact, take the time to step back and do some investigation. And I don't mean private investigation. I mean, find out more about this person. Because if you're looking through a dating app lens to see somebody, you're basically looking at somebody where there may be three pictures, if you're lucky, and maybe 50 words. Oh, and possibly their age, which may or may not be accurate, where they live city-wise, which is really not much information, and possibly their and possibly the age, and if they've got kids or not. That's about it. That's not enough to base a, a relationship on, in case you hadn't figured that out. But some of the people I know get caught up in this thing like, oh, they could be the one, it's so exciting, I want to meet this person, and they look so cool from their profile. It's, <laughs> it's not real. What's real is when you get to know somebody and meet them in person. I've, I've seen people just on Facebook, and people I know in real life, in real life, in other, as opposed to um, the virtual life of social media. Many people whose pictures look so amazing on social media, but we meet them in real life, they're not like the same person at all. The one thing about Facebook that I like a lot, to be honest, is that you may look at their profile picture and you go, wow, that person's really an attractive person. Well, I'm leaking out my private information. <laughs> okay, when I look at people on Facebook, I just check out who they are. But I always like dr drilling down into their, into their photos, and particularly their videos. And the reason I'm saying this is because for most people, we get caught up in the old billboard looking thing. We see an image and we go fall in love with the image. Watching somebody's videos, especially when it's not necessarily something where they're presented for TV with makeup, hair, looks, lights, everything else. And just for full disclosure, I do have lights. So <laughs> this, is not, this may not be my perfectly natural look, <laughs> I guess you're wondering. But when watching somebody on video, you get to see more about who the person is because the part about pictures, first it's two-dimensional, whereas with video, I would say it's more four-dimensional. I'm saying four for a reason because it's not just you see the person in depth because you see them moving around on camera, but also you actually hear them over time because the thing is when people animate, it tells a whole lot more about who the person is than just a still picture. And there's the animation piece showing the movement, how they interact, how they speak, how they articulate, what their views are, how intelligent they are that makes a point, makes a difference, and you can see more clearly that way. Unfortunately, most dating apps don't have that in built in. In fact, most dating apps just have one, two, three pictures and 50 words, which is nothing. So this love at first sight syndrome, if I want to call it that, is a trap that a lot of people fall into based upon the fact they don't have enough information, which means you're basically living in a fantasy, a constructed viewpoint that is not real. In case you hadn't figured it out yet, I'm not a fan <laughs> at all of that. My recommendation is if you meet somebody, you've got to meet them as soon as you can in person in a public place. I've talked about this before about having a daytime meeting in a public place. So it's light, it's natural lighting, it's real place, and it's public around in case you need to run. You never know. And you get to meet the person. Don't string out the fantasy over text messages and chats back and forth without actually talking to the person on the phone and meeting them in person. Those two things alone will accelerate the process to get to know if that's somebody you want to be with or not. And as soon as you know they're not, you can clear them out of the way and move on. One thing I'll say on the other side of that is sometimes you meet somebody right up front and you go, ooh, not interested. But when you get to know them, you start discovering about things about them you actually like. I've had that experience myself where I met somebody who at first I met them, I was like, mm, not really interested. But after a period of time, there was actual chemistry and there was actually a, an attraction that grew, that grew over a period of time because my initial rules fell away. And I'm sure you carry a few of those rules yourself. So my reminder to you, my encouragement to you, and my, my suggestion to you is, first of all, if you're using the dating apps, get to meet them in person up front as soon as you can so you, that way you know if they are or not even close, possibly being a match. And you you can remove them from your <laughs> you can remove them from your list of choices, and secondly, is get clear about what you really want and be willing to choose that over what you meet, because the other part is some people are badly in need of remembering to stay true to their values versus falling in love with the first thing the first one they meet. That's another trap people fall into, by the way. How you get their vision, how you create that reality, what you want. I have a few things I can offer in that particular boat, including my online programs and my coaching. 
Um, but I'm gonna put a link in the comments just to have a discovery session. If you're stuck in the area of love and relationships and you're really worried to find out how to get better results and do it the right way, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me where we can talk. That simple. Um, all right, I, <laughs> I'm being nudged. Um, I will share also in the comments the link to my Rocket 2019 playbook because that's getting some attention and people want to, want to invest in that. Um, that's a simple way of just preparing your year for the way you want it to be, not just about relationships, but any area of your life, all areas of your life if you want to. It's really um, seven different um, keys to attract the relationship you want. Excuse me. I just conflated two things together. Let me start it again. It's seven keys to attracting what you want in your life. Let me be clear about that. In any area of your life, and you can apply these seven, area, seven tools to all areas, including relationship, health, fitness, um, career, money, investments, spirituality, social life, whatever it, whatever it is. So that'll be in the comments too. Now I've pitched it enough. Um, and with that, I think I've given you enough information to think about, but my, my point again is this simple, is don't be too caught up in the uh, love at first sight syndrome, because again, for 99% of the people, it doesn't work. Be willing to invest the time to do your due diligence, to meet the person, get to know them, and then decide if it's something you want to be with. But don't build your fantasy on an illusion. Because if you've ever done it before, you know there's nothing behind it. It's just smoke and mirrors. So do the work. Meet the right people. Find the way to connect, attract, and actually get in a relationship with the right people. And have an amazing love life. But it's not always easy. And it's not always straightforward. And love across and locking eyes across a crowded room may not be the answer. Just saying. So I appreciate you watching my video. Um, Lisa, nice to have you here. It seems it seems to me nowadays men and women can't get over the physical attraction to go further. Well, that, that um, in a way, you're right. Yes, there is there is a flaw in this. Um, dating, there is a flaw in the dating app, online swiping stuff because it's the wrong place to meet people. What I would suggest strongly is don't use them. If you're really going to get a problem with the way people are just picked up on visual pictures and imagery, which are their three best pictures they can find online, period, to put up on these apps is meet people in real life. Not through the dating apps, but you go out socially, go to, go to meetups, go to social gatherings, go to a place where you can meet people, they can get to know them and they get to know you. It's a much healthier way of doing things. And again, if you're not sure how to attract the relationship you want, that is my speciality. And again, I'll put the link in the comments for a discovery session, we can talk. But yeah, no, I understand that. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, wondering who I'm talking to, this is a Facebook Live initially, so I need to give you the link so you can find those things. Um, but I hope that answers your question, Lisa. This is one of those things where finding love in the right places starts with finding love inside first. And that's a powerful place to shift to because many people are out there looking for love out there and getting upset and being judging themselves because what's out there isn't matching what they want. That's not true. Loving yourself first, being self-centered and self-supportive is the only place to really start to have love in your life the way you want it. So replays, um, this is Facebook Live first. My personal page is where it gets broadcast, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. All the replays I put onto my business page, and basically that's where everything is, you can say this. My personal page has lots of stuff on it. My business page is more centered towards this. So if you look at my business page, you'll see all of these more closely gathered together, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. Fair enough. If you want to watch my YouTube versions, because I do have them on YouTube as well, I have them all on a playlist called Messages from the Masculine on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. And I've also got them on my podcast, which I'm loading up in audio format only. If you want to just listen to one of me when, I'm driving, when you're driving around. And that is uh, Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. So with that, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube and podcast. Um, appreciate that. And if you have any questions, comments, please message me. I'll respond after I sign off to any comments in the broadcast and I will put the links in there for a discovery session and uh, the Rocket 2019 playbook because it will help you. With that, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself and I will see you again. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, remember that. This is every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So please join me tomorrow at the same time, same bat channel. With that, thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Bye.